Welcome to our online service. We're really glad that you could join us. As we gather to worship in homes across Whitchurch, Cardiff and further afield, let's begin by praying together. Father God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, deeply indebted for the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown towards us. We come to you as the source and centre of all our hope, our creator, sustainer, and ever-present helper. We come wanting to trust you more, ready to confess the poverty of our faith, grateful that you welcome us just as we are. And so we come before you, offering you the worship of our hearts and lives. Open our eyes to see and know your presence with us. Open our ears to recognise your voice, that we might walk in the way of your truth and love. Amen. We're now going to hear today's psalm, which is Psalm 138, brought to us by a few of those who joined us in the Ark last Thursday. And then we're going to have our first song, Give Thanks to the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord when they hear what you have decreed. May the sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For why he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty stretched out his love endures forever for the life that has been reborn his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong
Next week is week six of the summer holidays, which means it's the last week of the holidays and most of you will be getting ready to go back to or start school. It's been a strange summer holidays this year. Maybe you haven't been able to go on holiday. Perhaps you haven't seen your friends as much, but I'm sure you've still been able to make some great memories with your family. How are you feeling about going back to school? Let's take a look at some of the things you've said. like when you feel sad, worried or scared. Parents or adults that you live with are always a great source of comfort and someone you can trust. Another place to turn to is God. As Christians, we have the gift of being able to turn our problems over to God. God will listen to your worries and he may even be able to help you with them. Today's Bible verse is from the first book of Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. Give all your worries to him because he cares about you. I'm sure some of you are feeling nervous or worried about going back to school because things will be different. But the great news is that God promises that you can give your worries to him. Why? Because he loves you. Can you draw or write your worries onto a piece of paper? You might feel worried about starting a new school, having a new teacher, the changes in school due to coronavirus. Or maybe you're worried about having to get up early and get to school on time. We're going to make this piece of paper into a paper aeroplane while we take our worries to God in prayer. Dear God, we pray for all the children and young people in our church family who are starting a new school or going back to school or college. We also pray for all the grown-ups who work in these schools. Let them all remember that they can give their worries to you wherever they are because you love us. And as we throw our paper aeroplanes, we're going to say Amen. Are you ready? One, two, three. Amen! Last week we finished looking at some of Paul's prison letters. And now we've got a couple of weeks before we start a new series in September. So today I thought we'd take a look at a biblical understanding of well-being. It's become quite a buzzword recently as the importance of taking care of our well-being has been highlighted and shown to have positive effects when we do. And particularly at this strange time when we've experienced living in lockdown and are now adapting to new ways of doing things whilst living with the uncertainty of how long things will stay the way they currently are, it is arguably more significant than ever to attend to our well-being. But as you can imagine, it isn't a completely new concept. In the Old Testament, the word shalom is often translated complete or whole, but it can also be translated well-being. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 22, David goes to see his brothers on the battlefield, and he greets them with the Hebrew word shalom, which is translated to inquire as to their well-being. It's also interesting to note that in Leviticus 3, the chapter heading in the NRSV Bible is Offerings of Well-Being. And we read in verse 1, If the offering is a sacrifice of well-being, if you offer an animal of the herd, whether male or female, you shall offer one without blemish before the Lord. Also known as the fellowship or peace offering, the offering of well-being was a ritual sacrifice undertaken in Jewish spirituality. Author and scholar D.A. Carson explains how the Hebrew name for the sacrifice is derived from the root Salem, which means complete or whole, and is therefore related to Shalom, the word for wholeness, welfare and peace. 
Unlike other sacrifices carried out by a priest before God on behalf of the giver, part of this sacrifice would involve the giver eating some of the meat, suggesting that we have a part to play in maintaining our well-being, and that there is an element of our well-being that involves both giving and receiving, submitting ourselves before God and receiving his provision and grace. And this is seen to an even greater extent in the New Testament, because the Greek word for the equivalent of the Hebrew shalom is erene, which is also translated peace. And as we know, Jesus came to earth to bring peace. On several occasions, he tells his followers he has come to give them peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And a few chapters later, John tells us that Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. The peace Jesus speaks of, though, is not just an absence of conflict, but again encompasses the same idea of wholeness or completeness. Or to put it another way, a sense of harmony in, the, in our relationship with God. Jesus came to make peace and restore to wholeness the broken relationships between humanity and their creator. And as we submit ourselves to his lordship, we open up ourselves to receive this great gift of peace, of salvation, of wholeness. And peace isn't the only thing that Jesus offers us in relation to our well-being. Curate Michelle Hampson discusses how the word well-being is derived from the German Wollen, which means springs of living water. And in John 4, Jesus describes himself as living water to the Samaritan woman he meets at the well. Just as he offers himself as a source of peace or shalom, here he also offers himself as a source of living water, of well-being. And he gives people not ordinary water that only momentarily quenches our thirst, but living water that becomes in those who receive it a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So biblical well-being isn't just limited to the here and now, it goes on into eternity. Jesus came to bring shalom with no end, making right all wrongs and healing all that has been broken. The word volen also relates to abundance or fullness, and Jesus further says in John 10.10 10, that he has come that we may have life in all its fullness, a complete life, a life lived in light of the shalom Christ offers. And Jesus not only invites us to experience shalom through him, he also offers us a model of how to achieve it. Let's take a quick look at Matthew chapter 14. Jesus had had a busy day. He had learned about the death of his friend John the Baptist and tried to withdraw to a deserted place by boat, but was followed on foot by a large crowd. And having compassion for them, he cured their sick, and then he miraculously fed them all with just five loaves and two fish. I'm sure you remember the story well. But then we read in verses 22 and 23, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Having looked after others all day, he doesn't forget to look after himself. He ensures he takes the time he needs to be with his father, to pray and to share the load and burden of the day. And this isn't the only time we see Jesus do this. Jesus often withdraws from people, from activity, from the demands placed on him by others, in order to take time to rest and to be renewed by spending time with his father. It's how he began his ministry, it's how he made important decisions, how he dealt with the troubling emotions like grief, it's how he dealt with the constant demands of his ministry, how he taught his disciples, how he prepared for significant events, it's even how he prepared for his death on the cross. But he doesn't just spend time on his own, we also read about times he accepts hospitality from friends, like in Luke 10 when Martha opens her home to him. Times he spends with his 12 disciples, like the Passover meal, and times when he was just with his inner circle of friends, Peter, James and John, like at the Transfiguration. 
Jesus obviously had different levels of friendships, allowing for him to share more or less of himself as he needed. And well-being does have a social dimension to it. We all need to feel loved and cared for. So it's good to have people you know you can just be with, people who you can talk to if you need to, people with whom you feel comfortable in your own skin. So we've seen how our relationship with God is important for our well-being, as are our relationships with others, but we can't forget our relationship with ourselves. Being at peace with ourselves is also crucial to our well-being. Jesus knew who he was. He was clear about his purpose. He wasn't reliant on other people's opinions to give him his sense of well-being. And we too need to live in the light of our identity as those known and loved by God, as those who choose to trust him and his ways. Maybe this is in part why Jesus tells us in Mark 12 verse 30 to love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind and with all our strength. Because when we do this, we not only give God the honour he deserves, but all of us will be in sync too, working together as a whole, thereby aiding our well-being. Which means we'll also be ready to receive the wholeness, the fullness of life and the ability to find peace, whatever we are going through, that is only found in him. In several places, the Bible seems to suggest that it is possible to maintain our well-being in all circumstances. But in practice, this is not easy to achieve because our circumstances have the potential to negatively affect our well-being. But we are given many invitations to draw on God's provisions to help us. In Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And as Rachel shared with us earlier, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. And one you might remember from the last few weeks in Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Our weaknesses, concerns, the situations we find ourselves in, need not diminish our well-being. In fact, the opposite can be true, as they are opportunities for God's grace and power to be revealed, as Paul acknowledges in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It says this, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Well-being is something that does affect us all. Often people link it with mental health, and of course our mental health will have a direct impact on our well-being. But our well-being is not limited just to our mental health, as we've already seen. And there is much more that could be said specifically about mental health, but we will leave that for another day. This quick biblical exploration has shown how Christians understand well-being as related to God's gift of peace, fullness and ultimately salvation. But it's interesting to note that the World Health Organization states that well-being is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, but misses out the spiritual completely, despite all the evidence that this also promotes well-being. You may have heard of the five ways to well-being, which is a list of five activities compiled on the advice of over 400 leading experts, as they believe these activities help those who do them regularly to positively maintain their well-being. They are connecting, ongoing learning, keeping active, taking notice and giving. Although each of these are useful in themselves, a number of people, including Ruth Rice, Director of Renew Wellbeing, have demonstrated how they can also be implied in a spiritual way. So what might this look like for us? Well, firstly, we can ensure we stay connected with God in prayer and regularly connect with family and friends. This may also mean connecting with those we may have had grievances with, because as we've already seen, when our relationships are out of alignment, we no longer have that sense of wholeness. 
And so we need reconciliation and restoration to bring shalom. Secondly, we all know that we'll never fully be able to understand God or grasp his ways, but we have a whole lifetime to keep learning about him and getting to know him better. This may be through individual Bible study and learning together in a small group, as well as learning collectively through the witness of a church fellowship. Thirdly, there are many ways and opportunities to remain active through Christian service. There are no age limits or restrictions, so why not think about what you enjoy doing and do it joyfully for the Lord? But there is a flip side to this one, as it's also important to take time to rest and just spend time with God as Jesus modelled for us. Fourthly, it's always good to spend time just marvelling at God's creation, as well as taking notice of what God is saying to you through his word, through friends and family, even through your circumstances. And lastly, gratitude has been linked with well-being, so giving thanks is a good place to start with this one. But we can also give of our time, our expertise and our resources, not forgetting the need to give forgiveness when needed too. When you think about it, all these things overlap. So in your giving, you may also be learning and in taking notice, you may also find yourself connecting more with God. But that's why it's great to use these things as a way of maintaining your well-being and living in light of the fullness of God's shalom. So that's it, a whistle-stop tour of well-being in the Bible. Let's take some time now to pray and to thank God for a number of things that can contribute to our well-being before we have our final song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
Thank you for joining us this morning and this afternoon we have Messy Church at 4.30 and Coffee and Chat at 6pm both on Zoom. Do get in touch if you'd like those details. And today we finish with a blessing from the new well-being. May the God of all peace make you whole and holy. May he keep you in his shalom, body, mind and spirit, ready for his presence. He has called you. He is faithful. He will do it. Amen. Amen.